Everywhere you look around, there's a logo connected to a company, whether big or small. And today, we're going to get into the origins of the Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee beans. Many connoisseurs agree that Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is one of the world's best. It is a signature elite rare coffee. But what exactly is it? Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee can claim its origins from a decision taken by a French king in the 18th century. In 1723, King Louis XV sent three coffee plants to the French colony of Martinique, 1,900 kilometers southwest of Jamaica. Five years later, in 1728, Sir Nicholas Laws, governor of Jamaica, received a gift of one coffee plant from the governor of Martinique. The rest is history. This one plant was nurtured and a plantation grown. Within nine years, the first coffee was exported and the Jamaican coffee industry was born. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee is a globally protected certification mark for coffee that comes from the Blue Mountain area of Jamaica. Arabica Coffee loves the nitrogen and phosphorus rich soil of Jamaica and nowhere else better than the steep elevations of the Blue Mountains. Located north of Kingston on the eastern side of the island, the Blue Mountains rise to altitudes of 2,350 meters. The coffee being cultivated is mostly Arabica typica. The coffee thrives in the fertile volcanic soil with its regular rainfall and most importantly, under the island's misty cloud cover to shade it from the burning sun. All these factors combine to yield a coffee of exceptional sweetness and aroma, rich flavor and full body with mild acidity. No wonder then that James Bond called it the most delicious in the world in Ian Fleming's novel, Live and Let Die. The result is what many regard as the best coffee in the world and the champagne of coffees. The area where Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee plants are cultivated is strictly controlled with exportable annual production at between 1,000 and 1,350 metric tons, tiny by world standards, and equivalent to just 0.1% of Colombian production, or, put another way, equivalent to three hours of Colombian coffee production. Indeed, to be called Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee, it must be grown at altitudes of up to 1,800 metres in the parishes of Portland, St. Andrew, St. Mary and St. Thomas. Comprising an area of some 6,000 hectares, coffee farming in the Blue Mountains is characterised by mostly small holdings of up to 4 hectares, but there are larger estates of up to 70 hectares in size. There are around 25,000 small holders and estates in total. Highlighting its scarcity and exclusivity is the fact that Jamaica Blue Mountain is the only coffee in the world to be packed in iconic wooden barrels instead of hessian sacks. All Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee must go through the Coffee Industry Board, where the green coffee is rigorously inspected as to screen size, colour, humidity, defects and cup quality before it's passed and certified for export. This can take time and cause delays, but quality is paramount and strictly controlled, ensuring that all export grade Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is of the highest quality. So what's your name? It's Debbie. Debbie. And um, so how do you sort the beans? Well, actually, you just dry it down and you take out all of the colored one, the rotten teeth one, and any one that has bora in it. So, for example, which one would that be? This one would be a black one. This okay. one would be a rotten teeth one. So you have to take out those from it, from the good one. Today, with annual production of Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee remaining very low, Jamaica Blue Mountain remains, as ever, elusive luxurious, treasured, and delicious. Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is imported into Europe from the main processor producers, namely Clydesdale, Mavis Bank, Wallenford Coffee Company, and Gold Cup, as well as the two principal estates with export licenses. Mavis Bank maintains their pulpery and dry mill jointly in St. Andrews in the Blue Mountains. The Wallenford Coffee Company is also a long-established player. 
Wallenford have their pulperies in the Blue Mountains and their dry mill close to Kingston, which is the largest facility of its kind in Jamaica. Clydesdale is a more recently established producer, which has swiftly, together with Mavis Bank, become the largest exporters of Jamaica Blue Mountain. Pulping takes place in the mountains at their Clifton Mount facility. The processing is undertaken at the Blue Mountain Coffee Processors facility in Kingston. Gold Cup is the brand name for the coffees from Mount Lebanon Estate and Abbey Green Estate owned by Dr. Charles Lynn. The farms are located in the region of St. Thomas Parish. Founded in the mid-18th century, Clifton Mount Estate is situated in St. Andrew in the most spectacularly beautiful location in the Blue Mountains on the eastern slope of St. Catherine's Peak. RSW Estates actually comprise three estates. Resource Estate is located at an altitude of 1,200 metres above the Yalas River. Sherwood Forest Estate, with an area of over 400 hectares, is one of the largest intact original Blue Mountain coffee plantations. Whitfield Hall Estate is in the heart of the Blue Mountains, just below the Blue Mountain Peak, the highest mountain in the Blue Mountains. The processors operate a pricing regime combined with a pre-funding and balancing payment mechanism which categorically favours the smallholder farmer. The Coffee Industry Board also operates an insurance scheme to assist farmers in time of hurricanes and other catastrophes. Extension and technical services are also offered to the farmers both by the Coffee Industry Board and by the processor exporters. In the case of the larger farms, which sell to the processors, the workers are paid and employed under conditions regulated by strict Jamaican labour legislation. In this regard, wage and benefit levels are significantly higher compared with South American coffee industry norms. The workers come from neighbouring communities and in most cases, accommodation, education and medical facilities are nearby and have reasonable and accessible infrastructure. In environmental terms, the coffee is grown under naturally shaded and fauna-friendly conditions. As the coffee is wet processed, all the wastewater resulting from the coffee processing is fully treated and purified before being released into the environment. Composting and waste mucilage recycling are also becoming the norm. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee has a subtle, sophisticated cup. An exquisite balance of aroma, body and acidity is combined to make Jamaica Blue Mountain a very special coffee. But it is the mellow, sweet and creamy aftertaste that separates this unique coffee from all others, with a mild, smooth acidity and hints of chocolate with floral undertones. No wonder it has been the quintessential connoisseur favourite for so many years. Coffee has been grown in Jamaica since the early 18th century. Not being a native plant, it was introduced by an intrepid colonist, a former governor of Jamaica, Nicholas Laws. His renown as a prosecutor of infamous pirates, such as Calico Jack Rackham, and the two very notable women pirates, Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed, has been eclipsed in some circles by his foresight in bringing coffee to Jamaica. The plants he obtained came to the island by a fairly circuitous route. Our story begins in Ethiopia, where legend has it that some dancing goats attracted the attention of Kaldi, a shepherd. These frenetic goats were eating the berries of a particular tree, cultivated in Yemen, just across the Bab el Mandeb Strait. From the port of Mocha in Yemen, the Arabs carefully controlled the trade in coffee, allowing only infertile coffee beans to be exported so that no one else could cultivate the plant. Around 1670, a revered Indian Sufi, Baba Budan, making the Hajj to Mecca, managed to smuggle out of Mocha seven beans taped to his belly. He returned to the mountains above the Malabar coast in southwest India and planted the seeds, growing the first coffee outside Arabia. Near the close of the 17th century, the Dutch governor of Malabar sent coffee seedlings to the Dutch governor in Batavia, now Jakarta in Indonesia. While the initial seedlings failed, future plants took hold on the island of Java, which began exports to Europe in 1711. 
As interest in coffee grew in Europe, Louis XIV of France sought out a plant and was given one by the burghers of Amsterdam. Around 1714, he brought the plant to the Jardin des Plantes in Paris, where cuttings were cultivated. Sometime prior to 1720, a French army captain stationed in Martinique in the French West Indies had to return home on family business. But he had another idea as well, to return to the Caribbean colony with coffee. The idea was more easily conceived than carried out. The only coffee trees in France were in the Jardin des Plantes, controlled by the king's physician, Monsieur Chirac. Coffee trees were not freely handed out, so our French army captain Gabriel Mathieu de Clieux enlisted the aid of a woman of quality to persuade Monsieur Chirac to part with some coffee plants. The plan was successful, and our French captain obtained three coveted seedlings. Captain de Clieux embarked Nantes in 1723, but the trip was fraught with danger. Near Madeira, the ship was beset by corsairs. It is reported that Captain de Clieux himself dispatched the corsair captain, but all we know for certain is that they overcame the pirates. storm came up and forced the ship on a reef. Supplies were jettisoned to lighten the ship, including water, as the ship was not that far from its destination, Martinique. Successfully off the reef, they sailed on, but then the wind died. They drifted for days in the heat of the tropical sun, and water had to be rationed. Captain de Clieux shared his meager water ration with the one remaining coffee plant he had. Finally, the wind picked up, and Port Saint-Pierre, Martinique, was reached. Coffee had reached the Americas. Sometime around 1728 to 1730, the former governor of Jamaica, Nicholas Laws, traveled to Martinique and obtained the first coffee trees to be transplanted to Jamaica. While they were not planted immediately in the Blue Mountains, it was not long before the tree was thriving there. The terroir where the bean could express itself in one of the most sought-after and expensive coffees in the world, Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee. <laughs> 